The dissemination of stories regarding unsolved missing person cases or murders is of utmost importance for a multitude of reasons. The primary purpose is to ensure that the cases remain prominent in the public consciousness, which can potentially result in new information or leads that may facilitate the resolution of the cases. Moreover, these narratives can help draw attention to more pressing issues such as the necessity for better support mechanisms for the families of missing persons or more effective investigative strategies. It is also a means of commemorating the victims and keeping their memory alive, which is particularly crucial when justice is not attained. Ultimately, through the sharing of these stories, we can heighten awareness about the frequency of these occurrences and the significance of continuing efforts toward their resolution. Greetings, my name is Nix and welcome to Into the Dark, True Crime Stories, a novel video series that takes you on a voyage through some of the most perplexing and unresolved disappearances and homicides in the United States. Join me as we scrutinize the evidence, theories, and impact of these cases on the families and communities involved. We will delve deeper into what happened and probe the reasons why these cases remain unresolved to this day. From small towns to large cities, we will illuminate the darkest corners of the country in pursuit of the truth. So, join our fellow fireflies as we explore the mysteries of the shadows and venture deeper into the dark. Amina and Balel Kandil. Amina and Balel Kandil were two young children at the center of a custody dispute between their parents, Ahmed Kandil and Rebecca Downey. The couple had separated in June 2013, but had agreed on a joint custody arrangement for their children. However, on August 28, 2014, Ahmed took the children from their mother's care, claiming he was taking them to Toronto to spend the Labor Day weekend with his sister. He promised to return them in time for Amina's birthday on September 1. However, he did not return, and the children failed to attend their first day of school. Rebecca immediately became alarmed and contacted the authorities, who launched an investigation into the matter. Flight records revealed that Ahmed had taken the children to Ukraine and Turkey, but their whereabouts beyond that were unknown. In 2015, Rebecca received an email from Ahmed, claiming that he and the children were okay and living on a small farm. However, the email was traced back to Ahmed's native country, Egypt. The investigators continued their search for the missing children, working closely with international law enforcement agencies and tracing Ahmed's movements. However, they were unable to locate the children or their father. The case gained international attention, with appeals made to the public for any information that could lead to the children's whereabouts. The case was also widely covered in the media, with the hope that the increased publicity would bring new leads. Years went by, but there was no news of Amina and Bilal. The parents and family of the children continued to hope for their safe return, while investigators continued their search for the missing siblings. The case remains unsolved to this day, with many unanswered questions about what happened to Amina and Bilal. The children's disappearance highlights the importance of custody disputes being handled with sensitivity and care to ensure that the safety and well-being of the children involved are always the top priority. Daniel Cornelius Robinson Daniel Cornelius Robinson, a 24-year-old hydrogeologist, disappeared on June 23, 2021, after leaving his worksite in Buckeye, Arizona. His car was found rolled over in a remote part of the desert two and a half miles southwest of the job site, but Robinson has not been found. His family believes that the car crash scene was staged and that foul play may be involved. Daniel Robinson was originally from Columbia, South Carolina, but moved to Phoenix, Arizona in 2019 after graduating from college with a major in geology. He worked as a hydrogeologist for Matrix New World Engineering, often traveling long distances to oversee sites in remote desert areas. Described as friendly and passionate about adventure, Robinson was said to always see the bright side of things despite having been born without a right hand. On June 23, 2021, Robinson drove to a site near Sun Valley Parkway and Cactus, 
rode for a good project in the desert of Buckeye, Arizona. According to a co-worker, Robinson was acting strangely and said things that didn't make sense. Around 9.15 a.m., Robinson abruptly left the worksite when it started raining. Robinson left the job site in his Jeep, with tire tracks suggesting he headed west, going deeper into the desert terrain. Throughout the day, no one from his company, friends, or family could contact him. Daniel Robinson never returned home and has never been heard from again. On July 19, 2021, Robinson's 2017 blue slash gray Jeep Renegade, with Arizona license plate NLA2CMA, was found rolled over on its side in a ravine about two and a half miles southwest of the job site he was last seen. His cell phone, keys, wallet, and work clothes were recovered about three feet from the Jeep. Authorities conducted an extensive search of over 70 square miles of the area where Robinson's vehicle was recovered, with the help of UTV, cadaver dogs, drones and helicopters, but found no signs of him. After Daniel Robinson's disappearance, several sets of human remains were recovered by search parties, but none of them belonged to Robinson. According to an accident reconstructionist and a private investigator hired by Robinson's family, the car's black box showed that the vehicle was traveling under 30 miles per hour before the airbags were deployed. They also discovered that the car recorded more than 40 ignition cycles and traveled an additional 11 miles after the airbags were deployed. However, authorities stated that similar discrepancies had been found in the past by Jeep dealership service departments and other crash reconstructionists. Red paint was found transferred onto the right side of the Jeep, but there was no red paint in the area. His family believes that the vehicle crash scene was staged and foul play may be involved. Before his disappearance, Robinson told friends that he was in love with a woman named Caitlin, whom he met while working a side gig for Instacart, a grocery delivery and pickup service. The woman responded that she was uncomfortable with his actions and asked him to stop contacting her. According to his friends and relatives, Robinson reportedly behaved oddly before his disappearance, but didn't appear to be suicidal during the relationship. Daniel Robinson is still missing. The case remains under investigation. Felix de Jesus. On February 2, 2022, 41-year-old Felix de Jesus was last seen in Patterson, New Jersey. He had taken a cab back to his home in Haledon after drinking with friends, spoke with his family upon arrival, and then headed out to Patterson. Surveillance footage showed Felix walking down Union Avenue in Patterson around 8.22 p.m. Around 8.55 p.m., Felix was detained by two police officers outside La Bodega Parada on Union Avenue after allegedly causing a disturbance. Body cam footage showed the officers handcuffing Felix and putting him into the back of their vehicle. However, the officers shut off their cameras after this, and Felix was not charged with anything. The officers claimed they dropped him off at West Side Park, behind John F. Kennedy High School around 9.10 p.m. Felix's family attempted to file a missing report with the Patterson Police, but were told to file it with Haladin Police, since that was where Felix lived. According to the Haladin police, five people saw Felix at the park after he was dropped off by the officers, but their identities and statements have not been disclosed. Witnesses reported seeing a shivering man matching Felix's description at the park that evening, despite the freezing temperature and Felix being only in a t-shirt and pants. In November 2022, it was announced that the two officers who detained Felix were suspended for 90 days without pay following a police internal affairs investigation. They were found to have violated 10 policies including neglect of duty, breaking the rules for body cameras, and transporting citizens. The day Jesus family hired a lawyer, Jeff Paddy, who threatened to file a lawsuit against the city over its handling of Felix's detention. They also distributed flyers, requested additional videos from the police, hired a private investigator, and searched the areas near West Side Park and the Passaic River. The location of Felix de Jesus remains unknown, 
and the Passaic County Prosecutor's Office is also investigating the matter. The Haledon Police Department is offering a $5,000 reward for the successful recovery of Felix, and the De Jesus family is offering a reward of $20,000. Felix is a 41-year-old Hispanic male who stands 5'9 and weighs approximately 200 pounds. He has the Puerto Rico flag tattooed on his chest and was last seen wearing a white t-shirt, black sweatpants, and black boots. Margaret Haddikin McEnroe Margaret Haddikin McEnroe was a 29-year-old volunteer firefighter who went missing from her home in Warren Township, New Jersey on October 12, 2006, after an argument with her husband, Timothy McEnroe. Margaret was adopted by Eileen and Patrick Haddikin from Catholic Charities in Jackson, Mississippi, and grew up as the oldest of four adopted children. She joined the Army after the 9-11 terrorist attacks and was stationed with the Army as a tank mechanic in Fort Riley, Kansas, until her discharge in early 2004. Margaret had three daughters, two with her husband and one from a previous relationship. At the time of her disappearance, Margaret had been a volunteer firefighter with the Mount Bethel Fire Company for four years. She had recently resumed her duties after taking a leave of absence for the birth of her daughter. On October 9, 2006, Margaret had an argument with her husband and the police were called to their home on a report of a domestic disturbance. Margaret had a phone call with her best friend on October 10, 2006, from her residence in the vicinity of Witchwood Way and Round Top Road in Warren Township, New Jersey. Timothy left at approximately 1.30 p.m to bring baby formula home from A&P, and when he returned at 3.00 p.m., Margaret was nowhere to be seen, and their six-month-old baby daughter was home alone in her crib. Margaret never returned home, and has never been heard from again. Her husband reported her missing on October 12, 2006, to the Warren Township Police Department. Margaret left behind her SUV vehicle and cellular phone, which had been broken during an argument the night before. A duffel bag and $11,000 in cash were reported missing from their home by her husband. Authorities found no evidence of damage to the home, which would have indicated someone trying to remove her. Although her credit card was missing, police found no activity on her bank account. Six weeks after her disappearance, one of her army t-shirts was found on Thanksgiving Day 2006 by a Warren police officer on Dockwatch Hollow Road, about a mile from her home. Her family says the couple was having marital problems and that Margaret was considering a divorce. Her husband reportedly waited two days to report her missing at the urging of friends who believed she would soon return. On June 07, 2011, Timothy was named a person of interest after authorities interviewed potential witnesses and neighbors near the family's home. No arrests have been made. Police found no evidence, means, or motive for foul play in Margaret Haddikin McEnroe's disappearance. Friends and family don't believe she would have left without telling someone, nor would she leave her three kids behind. The circumstances of Margaret Haddikin McEnroe's disappearance remain unclear, and her case is currently classified as missing. Her case remains unsolved. In conclusion, the cases we've explored today are a haunting reminder that the world is often a dangerous and unpredictable place. Though these particular cases may never be solved, we can honor the memory of the victims by continuing to investigate and shed light on the circumstances surrounding their death. We must also remember that there are many other victims out there, and we must never forget the importance of pursuing justice on their behalf. Let us all remain vigilant and continue to work towards a world where such crimes are not only solved, but prevented from happening in the first place. Thank you for watching, and until next time, farewell.